Hello everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial on inflammation uh, from pathology made simple at ilopathology.com. In the previous three tutorials, you know, we had learned about uh, the vascular events of inflammation, the cellular events of inflammation and uh, in detail about the phagocytosis. Okay. If you want to uh, watch these videos, you can even click on the links below, um, below this particular video. Now, in today's tutorial, we will be discussing about the mediators of inflammation, okay, commonly called as the chemical mediators of inflammation. In the next uh, five to eight minutes, I'll be talking about uh, you know, the general properties of mediators of inflammation, the various types of mediators, and in detail about the histamine and serotonin. Now, what are mediators of inflammation? These are the substances that initiate and regulate inflammatory reactions. So basically, these are the substances which mediate the process of acute inflammation. Now, what are the general properties of these chemical mediators? The first important property is these mediators can be produced locally by the cells or they are derived from inactive precursors which are present in the plasma. Those produced by the cells, they are referred to as cell-derived mediators, whereas those already present in the plasma are plasma-derived mediators. The cell-derived mediators can be preformed, okay, or they are already made and then they are stored in the granules within the cells, or it can be synthesized de novo. It means to say that they are synthesized when they are in need. The second property is that they can be produced only in response to the agents that stimulate inflammation. Okay? These stimuli can be anything ranging from you know the injurious agents to the dead and degenerated tissues. The third one is that they can stimulate the release of another mediator. That means one mediator stimulates the release of another mediator. And most importantly, these mediators have very short lifespan. The reason for that is they are rapidly removed from the circulation. They can either decay spontaneously or they are removed by enzymatic inactivation. And the last important feature is they can act on wide variety of cells. So the mechanism of action can be same in all these targets or different in each of these targets. Basically, it means to say that they have different effects on different type of cells. Now let us see what are the different chemical mediators of inflammation. As I told you, uh, they can be cell derived or they can be plasma derived. As we all know that liver is the major source of plasma proteins. The cell derived mediators, as I have already explained, it could be preformed or it could be synthesized de novo. The preformed mediators are the most importantly histamine and serotonin. And the ones which are synthesized de novo are arachidonic acid metabolites, the plated activating factors, nitric oxide, reactive oxygen species, and various cytokines and chemokines. Plasma derived mediators can be either due to activation of complements or due to activation of factor 12. Those which are derived from complement activation are C3A, C3B, and C5A. Whereas those derived from factor 12 activation are either uh, could be coagulation systems or kinin systems. Let us understand more about histamine and uh, serotonin in today's tutorial. I will be describing in detail about the other mediators in the subsequent videos. Histamine and uh, serotonin. These are basically vasoactive amines. They are the first mediators to be released during inflammation. And these are derived from the decarboxylation of the amino acid histidine. And once it is formed, it can either be stored or rapidly deactivated. Most often, these are stored within the granules of various cells which we will be discussing in detail. Now let us understand the various sources through which we get histamine. The most important source of histamine is mast cells which are normally present you know around these blood vessels and nerves within the connective tissue. The second important source of histamine is the basophil and third important source of histamine are the platelets. The various stimuli for by which the histamine is released are the substances which induce inflammation like heat, cold, irradiation, trauma, etc. It can be anaphylotoxins like C3A and C5A. It could be interleukin 1 and interleukin 8 and also it could be histamine releasing factors. And these histamine releasing factors are you know, derived from the cells like neutrophils, monocytes and platelets which are already there at the site of inflammation. Now coming to the actions of histamine. 
the first and the most important action is increase in the vascular permeability the mechanism of this particular action is by increasing blood flow and the endothelial barrier disruption the second important action is vasodilatation this happens basically from the nitric oxide release so the nitric oxide is a major cause for vasodilatation so the combination of these two actions it is responsible for the wheel and flare reaction within the skin so what i'm trying to focus you is the wheel and flare reaction on the skin okay the wheel is the elevated area that is because of increase in the vascular permeability and the flare the surrounding red area that is because of vasodilatation okay so this classical wheel and flare reaction is basically due to increase in vascular permeability and the vasodilatation another important uh, aspect or another important action of uh, histamine is it is responsible for the itching and pain so how does this happen that is because there will be excitation of a subset of unmyelinated c fibers and these fibers are pro receptive okay they are the ones which results in pruritis or itching it also mediates bronchial asthma and anaphylactic shock so the mediation of bronchial asthma is basically by the contraction of extravascular smooth muscles for example the bronchus in this case so if you see this you can easily make out that smooth muscle of vascular tissue responds to histamine by relaxation whereas the smooth muscle of extravascular uh, tissue responds by contraction so you can understand that the same histamine has different action on different targets this is what i was talking about when i was mentioning about the diverse targets diverse action of these chemical mediators now coming to serotonin serotonin is actually 5 hydroxy tryptamine it is stored in the platelets as well as in the mast cells it is also present in chromaffin cells of gastrointestinal tract the spleen and nervous tissue so all the actions are similar to that of histamine but less potent compared to histamine so that is all about serotonin so i think in summary we uh, understood about the general properties of chemical mediators we talked about the various types of mediators and then in detail about histamine and serotonin thank you for watching if you want to see more of these you know uh, in the form of uh, presentation or downloadable format you can just log into ilopathology.com if you like this video please hit the like button do comment and don't forget to subscribe for more videos to come Please do share. Thank you.